Hi, this is Mark Laughlin, speaking for the Ambidextra Gunfighter, back in my little corrugated tunnel here. Uh, a culvert, basically a big giant culvert. Sorry for the echo. I tried recording this once outside and it's just way too windy. And I, I was gonna do it in the, my car and I thought, man, it just looks so stupid. I'll try to talk low, maybe it'll knock the echo down. Anyway, this is gonna be a quick one because I basically I did a shootout between my Tika T1X and my Ruger 1022. Uh, shootout with the Project Appleseed AQT, what was formerly known as the uh, Army Qualification Test. And there's four stages. Stage one is offhand, it's simulating, and this is all shot at 25 meters. But stage one is the target size to simulate shooting at 100 yards. And um, the, uh, so we'll, we'll work through each stage here. It's uh, 10, 10 rounds per stage, and uh, the offhand stage, you have two minutes. So that's plenty of time to do 10 rounds offhand. A little bit windy, but not too bad. Not like it was yesterday, but it is windy enough that I can't get good audio. Anyway, on the Tika, or the Ruger 1022, which is the, the little stick on things here, to cover them up. I ended up with a 42, which is not bad. Uh, offhand, I usually like to try to get to about a 45 on that. But I got a 42 with the Ruger 1022. What surprised me was to get a 47 with the T1X. And uh, it kind of proceeded about the same way throughout the rest of the course. Stage two is uh, what's called, it's sitting, and it's the target simulate 200 yards, and you have 55 seconds, you do a magazine change, you have one magazine with two rounds and one magazine with eight rounds. And um, I, I do this stage when I'm not at a Project Appleseed event uh, squatting. I prefer that for because it's more tactical. You can drop down into it, make your shots, and then get up and run. That's what we learned in paintball, was in paintball that if when you come in behind cover, you don't want to be on your knees, you don't want to be sitting on your butt, you want to be up to where you can take advantage of movement of opportunity. And you can't do that if you're sitting on your ass. So anyway, 
Uh, we'll start here with the Ruger 1022 on the bottom. Uh, scored a 39, eh, not exactly the best, but not, not terrible bad. Uh, but the T1X I got a 43 and uh, so again the T1X I did a little bit better so, especially for squatting normally I mean if you really want to get a really good score on the stage you're going to get down on your butt and, and elbows way down close to the ground um, the shooting sitting shooting position you know, full on your butt is way more stable but I've gotten to where I feel pretty comfortable shooting the squat pretty accurately. Then we get to stage three. In stage three, again, it's 10 rounds, but you have two magazines, one with two rounds, one with eight rounds, so you're doing a magazine change. And uh, you have 65 seconds. And on this one, on the Ruger 1022, I got a 45.
and on the Tika T1X, I got a 48. So really good score on the Tika T1X, pretty good score with the Ruger 1022 as well. That's Okay, the final stage is what we call in Project Appleseed the natural point of aim stages because this is where you can't fake if you don't have the natural point of aim. If you don't, fake, if you don't have your natural point of aim, you're going to suck. And uh, it's a, it simulates, the targets simulate uh, a silhouette at 400 yards. And in this stage, you have five minutes. So you have all the time in the world. You can really take care to get your natural point of aim. And uh, on this stage, the Tika T1X scored a 49, uh, really good groups, and, uh, and on this score you double it, so this really is heavily weighted in the Project Appleseed events. So and a maximum score is 50, so I, I got one four, all the rest were fives. The, uh, also though, did really well with the Ruger 1022 and also pretty damn good groups. Almost, almost as tight as the T1X.
But I got a 48, which is one of my higher scores on this stage with the Ruger 1022. I've done uh, known distance events, which are the full distance with my uh, BCM Recce, an AR-15 556, and I've gotten a little bit better, you know, I've gotten some 48s and I don't know if I've ever gotten a 49 before on this stage. Anyway, ended up with the total, the total score for the AQT, the uh, Tika, 1X, Tika T1X was 236, and I got a 222 on the Ruger 1022. Hmm. <laughs> okay, so uh, that's pretty significant difference uh, in score. 236 may be one of my higher scores ever, maybe? I, I know when I did a known distance event, uh, with my Ruger, B or not my Ruger, my BCM Recce, an AR-15. Uh, I was at an event and there was a, a, a woman there, she was a high power, co co you know, regular comp competitor in high power competition. And uh, we got into kind of a duel. Uh, the first time we went in, did the AQT, full known distance. That's at true 100, 200, 300, 400 yards. Uh, I don't remember what scores were, but she was one point ahead of me. So the next time out, I really bore down on it and scored a little bit better and thought, oh, I got her this time. And she got one point more again than I did. And it went like that through the rest of the afternoon. I ended up, uh, we ended up, I think, pushing up to about where I got 235 and I think she got 236. So I never did uh, best her, but it, it was a really good day for me and really everybody out there, I thought. But anyway, very impressive. How, how is it that the Tika T1X can keep up with the Ruger 1022 in an AQT with the magazine changes? Well, actually, the T1X magazines are very very efficient I think to change the way you can reach up under there and you grab the mag release button and then the mag kind of your whole hand comes down and kind of slips off that button and the mags in your hand and the Ruger 1022 with the flush mags are kind of sometimes a little bit of a bear to get out I don't think it was a factor uh, maybe a little bit mentally and that kind of stuff uh, both rifles today shot 100% uh, reliably, and this was using federal ammunition, white box bulk ammo. Neither one of them had any, no, didn't have any failures to fire on the Tika T1X, and no extraction or ejection problems on the Ruger 1022. Now, on my previous attempt at doing all this, this whole thing, I was doing the same, the same drill, uh, except I was doing it left and right. Today, I was only doing right-handed, and when I shot the rifles left and right, right uh, my Tika T1X and this day was the day this was a few days ago and it was really really windy and pretty chilly and um, I, th uh, I think my Tika T1X score was a 212 and a 213 213 right-handed 212 left-handed so really really close despite the fact that on T1X I had to reach over to work the bolt uh, so a little bit disruptive but okay so we, we say it affected me by one point not a big deal um, the advantage of the Ruger 1022 is that you can maintain your your natural point of aim and not disrupt it while operating the bolt. Now on the time section that is a little bit of an advantage but on the, the offhand and then on that really slow fire prone the, four, the stage four uh, I mean, you can take the time on stage four to get your natural point, you know, check and verify your natural point of aim with every every shot you fire on the T1X, even though operating that bolt does disrupt your natural point of aim a bit. So anyway, I'm very impressed of the, T, the T1X. Uh, I'm trying to think of why it scored better. It is a little bit accurate. I do think that my groups, when I, uh, My groups with the T1X are pr probably about, at one point I thought they were maybe two thirds the size of my Ruger 1022, but I think this may be more like, you know, three quarters the size of my uh, 1022 groups. Um, but still, you know, it's a little bit tighter. Uh, you, th you would think that, that would, the T1X would really dominate on the, the final stage where the, you know, you're shooting a little tiny postage stamp type targets and uh, where it would its accuracy would come into play 
but uh, now the rigger did fine. Now I did, uh, one thing I did do throughout the, the drill was on the stage one, I ran it with my Weaver V3. Both rifles have Weaver V3, so it's, you know, as far as sighting systems, it's pretty comparable. The, I set it to one magna, one X, so no magnification for stage one offhand, and then I went to two X magnification for the sitting, and then went to full three X magnification for the, the prone uh, uh, courses of fire. Anyway, very impressed with the Tika T1X. The my Ruger 1022 is an awesome rifle. It's you know got a lot of rounds to it. It's you know many years of use. Um, and it has a one of the Ruger the BX trigger in it, so it has a terrific trigger. But the T1X trigger, I think, is maybe you know a little bit better. But anyway, both rifles, I was able to do well with both. I'm just kind of surprised that I did that much better with the T1X. Uh, I was really thinking I was going to better push things a little bit closer. I mean, if you went just by the final stage, they're really, really close, and that's really where it counts, but uh, I think I just kind of messed up a little bit on the, the squatting stage with the, uh, with the Ruger, so, you know, that hurt it a bit, but anyway, I really like the T1X, still love my Ruger 1022. It's Mark Laughlin speaking for the Ambidextral Gunfighter. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Sorry for the audio. Maybe I can tone it down and tone it down a bit in post-production.